Thank you. Um, actually, the, the early 90s was an interesting time. Um, I, helped, I worked with a bunch of publishers um, in sort of 1989, 90, 90, 91, mostly um, newspapers, um, to try to help them go online and to go on in a distributed way where they were able to control the distribution of their work and also to help them make money by publishing on the net. And I'd say I got it about half right. Uh, we were able to, and this is a time when AOL was asking everybody to host everything with them. Um, and also there was LexisNexis, there were other things. The idea of aggregators was sort of on the rise at that time. Um, the idea of having publishers control the distribution of the works and control the terms and conditions of their, of their distribution was very well received. The problem was we weren't able to get so that anybody would be willing to really pay much on this new internet thing. Um, fortunately, we've got Apple Computer and now Amazon have now gone and proved that people will pay money for bits. It used to be that you could just get people to pay money um, through sort of this advertising thing or by going to somebody's store and buying a box that comes in the mail. But now we've got an opportunity, I would suggest, for going the next step of what it is kind of we set out to do that became the World Wide Web. And I'm going to suggest um, book server may be an area here. Um, we've got, it's basically at the point of technology demo. Uh, it's not a rolled out uh, announcement of a product line, but this is the perfect time to be here. And so I hope that this is something that you'd uh, take seriously tonight. Um, just, okay, so who, who am I? I've got a .org at the end of my email address, um, but I actually do uh, hold the basic ideas of capitalism very close to my heart. I did very well by it, um, but I really like a lot of competition, lots of players. The idea of single organizations controlling um, has generally not worked terribly well. But the Internet Archive is a nonprofit 501c3 uh, library located in San Francisco. Uh, dedicated to universal access to all knowledge. Universal access is sort of all the old stuff, but also all of the current stuff. Um, what we've been doing is sort of keeping up with some of the things that are available out there. We've been recording television 24 hours a day for the last 10 years, 20 channels, Russian, Chinese, Japanese, Iraqi, anyway, a lot of television. Uh, we've been putting up a lot of movies and learning how to put those online and working with people to get that sort of material online, most of it uh, public domain or freely licensable materials. Um, <clears throat> we've also got a lot of audio recordings working with 6,000 bands um, to make their audio recordings freely available as long as nobody makes any money, kind of the Grateful Dead uh, share and share alike uh, to approach. And we've been working very hard on books. So we now have 1,800,000 books that are publicly available on the internet for free. So this is a large collection of, uh, that come from about 150 libraries and as well as other um, open projects that are going on. Um, we digitize about 1,000 books every day in 20 scanning centers in five countries. So at the Library of Congress in the Adams Building, there's a, there's a uh, scanning center operating now and it will go till midnight and start again tomorrow, um, scanning books of the Library of Congress. And so it's about 1,000 books a day and it costs 10 cents a page to digitize a book. So about, if it's a 300-page book, which is about average, it's about $30 to digitize a book, and you get a beautiful book out of it. Um, if it's a 20th century book, um, the OCR is really, really good. If it's a really recent, like post-World War II book, uh, like some of the books we've scanned, we get about six errors per book. So the cost of digitizing a book non-destructively, so this isn't chopping off the bindings, this is holding the book like this, taking photographs of the pages, having somebody turn the pages, is 10 cents a book, uh, 10 cents a page. Uh, and it takes about half an hour, 45 minutes to digitize uh, your average book. So that's sort of something that's, that's ongoing, that's going on at, at great velocity. What the Internet Archive is probably best known for is collecting web pages. So we have 150 billion web pages now, and it's made into this Wayback Machine. So people can go and, and look at the past web, uh, web. We collect about the same amount of information as in all of the books of the Library of Congress every month. So it's a large collection and growing very rapidly, and it gets about a 500,000 people a day using it. So that's what the Internet Archive is. But really what I'd like to do is talk about evolution of books on the Internet. I think we've got a great opportunity if we take it. Um, and it's going to require some collective action to be able to, to make it go. Um, <clears throat> but let's take 
uh, a, a cut of what are the books. If you wanted to offer a compendium of all books, which is really what people want, they want to be able to ask something of the great library. Um, it's going to be made up of out of copyright, out of print, and in print materials. And, and one of the couple things that we tend to agree with Google on is the breakdown of, of what it is, how large these sets are. Um, the out of copyright, at least that are in libraries, is about 20%. And 70% are out of print, and maybe about 10% are still in print. And of course, exactly what in print means is getting a little fuzzy, but grant me sort of these general uh, categories. If you take a great library, uh, Harvard's libraries, Yale's, Princeton, some, something like New York Public Library, it's about 10 million books. So if we take 10 million, if you take 20% of that, which is out of copyright, um, that's about 2 million books. So, uh, and, and yes, there's a long tail. There's more than that. But if you were to get a 10 million book library, you're up there with the greatest libraries ever built by humans. So at 1,800,000 books that we now have up and available on the internet, um, we're getting pretty close, I'd say, to having the out of copyright materials in pretty good shape. You guys are working on uh, really trying to get the in-print materials in and up and running in some reasonable form and format in such a way that there's an ongoing business model, which I think you should be very careful about right at this particular junction. And then there's this limbo land of the out of print, the orphans, the stuff that's sort of this big hole. It's the 20th century. It's the stuff that's left in copyright limbo because we changed the copyright laws such that they last forever and copyright everything. And it doesn't make any sense, but we did it anyway. And so about 70% of the libraries are in this out of print zone. So I'd say we're getting pretty good at the out of copyright, but we're not very good at these other pieces. And I'm going to suggest a system called Book Server to try to solve those other areas. What we have with the World Wide Web is we have a system that has multiple devices that talk to multiple search engines and go to, um, uh, go to multiple websites. So in the way that it works, as we all know, your device goes and contacts a web search engine, then it goes directly to the website itself. It's a distributed system. It's not an aggregated system. It's a distributed system, duh. But I'd say it's, uh, we're, we've now really achieved universal access to free stuff. We really haven't gotten universal access to all knowledge. We just have free stuff. If people have figured out some way to make a business model enough to offer something for free on the internet, it's out there. So Wikipedia is doing great, it's wonderful, work with a lot of organizations that have figured out how to make a business model out of giving things away, but it doesn't really solve the problem of how to get people paid and how to get the stuff that's out of print online in some effective way so that you don't get sued out of oblivion. I'm going to suggest uh, Book Server is an approach towards this, a distributed system for lending and vending on the internet. So if we could make it so that it's as smooth and easy to buy something um, in a distributed environment as it is going to Amazon and making that available, we will really have achieved something. And I'm going to suggest that we are um, at a technology demo level uh, and there's a group of organizations working towards that exact goal. So a book server, what I'm going to suggest is we can actually have lots of readers talk to multiple search engines, that was plural search engines, and it talks to book servers, uh, it talks to uh, libraries, publishers, and booksellers that can either give things away for free, lend on the internet, and vend on the internet. And to do this, I, I could go and show you all of these devices working, but I'll do a bit of a hand wave as I go through. The first set is to try to show that from a laptop, that you can go to a search engine, and in this case, openlibrary.org, which is a hub of books uh, operated by the Internet Archive, to go and search, to go and find a, a, a book, and then find that it's actually in, Tor uh, in Toronto. In this case, um, which we, I would do if there were more time, uh, go and find Flatland, available for free, um, uh, from the University of Toronto. So here we've had a device, contact a search engine, and then instead of getting it from that search provider, the book itself, from that store, it goes and referred it uh, on to uh, University of Toronto. Doesn't sound too tough, but it's something that's not being actively done with books right now. It requires a catalog format that allows search engines to hoover together the catalog formats and then go and know where it is to point people to um, when they when they find it. Um, with this system, um, 
I'm announcing that 1.8 million books are now available to kids using the one laptop per child. By working with them, they've made a client software that works with this open system to make it so that anybody using this, uh, uh, this machine now has access to a really great library of old materials because there's no uh, uh, in-print or out-of-print on this. But I think that's a pretty, uh, pretty good start. The next step is to make it so that people's devices that can support, um, that people are expecting books on, can get access to this. And the Kindle is now widely used, and it comes with a web browser. And with that, we're able to use the book server system to go and have it connect to a search engine, in this case, Open Library, or Ink Mesh is also another search engine that handles these OPDF files, these XML atom-like feeds of catalog data that you can then go and search and find that within your device and then download a Mobi uh, book to this device and read it. So we've uh, been able to demonstrate that even if you're on a, uh, on a Kindle, in an open way, one can contact a search engine and then go directly to feed books and be able to download the book. No Amazon involved. So it's their device, their wireless connection, but using the web browser and going and downloading the books in an open way with open formats um, to be able to get at that without having to go through Amazon as the central uh, player in that. Next is to try, to, uh, we've shown that we can use an iPhone, which I don't even have just here, I always have it in my pocket because I use it so much, um, that is able to go with this to, again to a search engine, find a book that's for sale, and go and buy it from O'Reilly on the iPhone, download it, and start reading it. It's because um, O'Reilly distributes their books in EPUB without digital rights management. And it uses sort of this clunky, agreed, um, sort of web interface to try to affect that, the uh, purchase. But it's still going through the same system. We're going from a device to one of any search engines, be able to find uh, the book that I want to go and buy, go to the uh, website that is book server enabled, ex execute the uh, transaction, be able to download and read, and again, no, I, I, uh, no Apple store in the mix. So here is a, a mechanism for distributed uh, distribution um, as well. But really, um, so that's a for pay book. Um, there's a law that was passed in the United States, which is really quite, um, I think, remarkable. It's uh, a law that was done for the print disabled, for the blind and dyslexic that couldn't um, basically read books. And the publishers often had been saying, well, we're going to get to that market, but it was very, very slow. Um, and so Congress passed a law that said that it's legal for uh, <clears throat> uh, those that have the right level of qualifications of disabledness to be able to get access to any book. So any, it is okay to scan and distribute as long as it's within um, this encrypted DAISY format um, that is distributed to people that have the certain level of, of um, uh, dis disabilities. And the Library of Congress, in fact, registers people that have these disabilities. And they say about 80% of the people that have registered with them, of the 800,000 people that have registered, are senior citizens. So it's people, and we're starting to get there ourselves, it's, it's because we're not born blind, it's just we become such that reading is, becomes very, very difficult. Um, and we've now made our books um, available um, on this device. And I'd like to see if the audio works. This is a um, Victor Reader stream. Victor Reader. Please wait. Please wait. This is a, um, a device that's specially designed for um, the print disabled. It uh, knows how to take your license key that you're given by the Library of Congress to be able to. Take me chair, a battered, stout. Unusually low wooden folding chair that was held together with brackets. 
glue, and piano wire. The chair had once had a G through it while seated was Astoria. So this is a, a, a device that's particularly designed for the, the blind that handles encrypted files. And what I'm very excited to say is for all the books that the Internet Archive has been digitizing that are uh, in copyright, both in print and out of print, um, are very soon uh, um, being uh, made available to the blind and dyslexic. Um, in, these, in this new way. So the, um, the blind and dyslexic in many ways will have the greatest digital library ever made uh, because of this particular copyright uh, exemption. Now this doesn't say exactly sort of where um, many in the, the publishing industry go, but I, I would say there's one, uh, except that you can now distribute your books directly on the internet um, using this technology to get directly to your customers. That controlling the distribution of your work, setting your own terms, is going to be important for the rapid evolution of this field. But libraries are really left out in this particular area, and it's been a bit of a struggle as to figure out what do libraries do. Um, and I suggest the best thing libraries can do is to go and lend books, be lending libraries. So these lending libraries would then make available books scanned books, if they, have, if they own a book, they can loan a book, digitize it, make it available, but only one copy at a time. So if two people try to go and contact us to go and borrow the same out of print work, not in print, out of print work, um, that it gets locked out using the Adobe Content Server 4, which is the same technology that a lot of publishers use uh, for going and making um, uh, their books available um, that are in print. So this, if you were to go and download, say, my uh, grandfather's book, um, Power of Positive Living, the next person trying to do it would get some cryptic, email, uh, cryptic message saying that it's uh, not doable. So what we've, I've tried to demonstrate by hand-waving mostly, though the, all of these pieces are working, that it is now possible to build a distributed system as opposed to the centralized systems that can go and offer books for sale and for lending in a distributed way that book server may be a way that we can go and have this open standards approach. It's like the World Wide Web in terms of there's no license to this stuff. It's just pay attention to the protocols, and then you can participate. There are a number of organizations that last October went and uh, signed up towards being involved in this uh, system. And actually, just today, um, I'd like to announce that Voyager in Japan is committed to putting 10,000 to 15,000 in copyright books in Japan available on the book server. So who benefits? Authors, they get wider distribution. Publishers get to control distribution in a distributed way. Booksellers uh, have a role to play going forward. Device makers can instantly have a million books on every one of their devices by paying attention to the protocols. Libraries because they're in the lending business again, and readers get great books. Book server, I hope that it helps um, in getting the other piece of the internet put together, which is distributed making of money. Thank you very much.